Hold on, I'm having a bit of a... Can I ask you all to put your speakers on mute while we're... Uh... OK, started recording now, Councillor Drinks. So if you want to start the meeting off, or oh, here's Laura as well. Right, thank you. Can I start by welcoming you all to uh, Oscar to Ward for a meeting? And can I advise you that the meeting will be recorded for uh, future reference? Um, can I start by uh, one announcement by introducing our new councillor, which is Darius Sandu, is the Conservative councillor that was elected in the by-election to, sadly, under sad circumstances, to replace Keith Lineker. Uh, welcome him to the meeting. Um, can I just a, a little bit of uh, housework? Um, if uh, you wish to speak, please put your hand up. Um, can you keep your microphones on mute while the meeting is in progress so that we don't get disturbed by uh, background noise? If you put your hand up, I'll call you as your turn arises if you need to speak. And uh, I hope you enjoy our meeting. And can I welcome John O'Shea from the Cabinet Member for Fleet and Waste Management and also Justin Hillier, who's accompanying him. I'm sure there'll be lots of questions in that direction. <laughs> and uh, can I welcome Claire, you know, to our meeting this afternoon as well. Uh, also Neil. And, uh, of course, our big school, the main school in Oscars, and that's Mr. William and son who's now we now in the academy, the forties academy. So we can look forward to his report on what's happening with the uh, rebirth of the uh, leisure centre. Is it the leisure centre? I suppose it is, isn't it? It's still a leisure centre. Uh, the leisure centre in Oscar, which is a good news story for us. It was something that Keith and I were very ke keen to, uh, you know get back on board because it's been out of action for a long time. So, and welcome to our MP, Khalid Mahmood, who's just completed 20 years as our MP. So congratulations, Khalid. Right, so we'll start with the meeting and the first person uh, on the agenda, I think it is uh, Claire. Hello, yes, uh, it's myself. Uh, so just to go over... Can we have an update from you, Claire, please? And just one thing that I'd like you to mention, because I have asked for it with our local PCs, is that we can look at a pop-up police station in the Oscar ward, because uh, the, the residents like to talk to our police, you know, face-to-face. -face. OK, thank you. Yes, just on the pop-up police station, I think the, the best we're doing so far is we're trying to get a marquee. And that's something that we can pop up and just put up on the circle um, at the Asda, prominent places where obviously we can get a bit of shield from weather and people can come and talk to us. Um, coming out of lockdown now, there's various different locations we can try and tap into to see if we can use a room there and make ourselves more available because we are based over at Handsworth. That's where we parade from. So, um, and it's not an open police station anyway um so yeah we will make ourselves more readily available and they'll be popping up in different locations supermarkets and stuff like that um just to look at a few of the crime stats if we were to look at the year to date figures uh crime on a whole on oscar is two percent increase from year to date last year um i think over the whole of west midlands we will see an increase in crime just because of the way we're recording crime the home office counting rules i think west midlands police failed an audit um several times so literally every every matter we're going out to we are pretty much crime in a public order matter or something because if you appreciate if you call in 999 there's a likelihood you harassed alarm distressed over some sort of incident and all in line with the home office counting rules we have to record a lot more a lot more than we used to um, just to meet those audits so a two percent rise isn't a great rise um, and as i say across the board we would be looking at a further rise anyway in terms of robbery offenses uh, for year to date figures there's an increase of nine percent up on oscar um, but if we look at that in terms of crimes it's gone from 44 offenses this time last year to now 48 offenses this time this year um, under 25 violence, uh, we've seen a huge decrease in that. Year-to-date difference this month compared to this time last year is a 52% decrease. 
Um, there's a lot of work that's gone in around the youth um, that's in partnership with schools, um, different services that are put on. I know some of ours are going up to Fortis Academy um, on the Thursday club that you've got on there for the sports. We've got officers working there. Um, but basically, there's a youth crime database. So anytime there's a youth offender that's involved in any kind of crime that's recorded, what they're arrested for, as a neighbourhood team, we have a responsibility to go through those, follow that up, look at intervention, look at referrals that we can put in place, alert schools, working closely with them, any social workers, any mentor work. The list is endless. I can't say it's categorically down to that, but it will be a contributing factor, no doubt, to see such a huge decrease in under 25 violence in Oscar. Uh, vehicle crime also, that's down 30% from this time last year. Uh, this time last year, 168 offences, vehicle crime, and we've gone down to 117. Um, a large majority of that was to do with the cat thefts. Obviously, that was a new kind of crime um, emerging, people getting on the scrap of scrap metal costs of cat thefts and they're literally hacking away at people's catalytic converters under their cars causing thousands of pounds worth of damage for them to trade that in at scrap metal price um we actually had offenders arrested up in oscott we had a vehicle recovered up in oscott with several cats in in cats being catalytic converters not cats meow <laughs> in the boot um so yeah and then we do work around the garages and stuff as well putting the heat on garages obviously to not then participate in anything to do with these and it's just an education really in any places that we feel might be taking advantage and allowing them to be weighed in obviously we're putting the heat on and pressure there um other type other things in terms of vehicle crime it could be number plate thefts we see that as well people just removing number plates to obviously make their vehicle look like a legitimate vehicle if it's stolen um burglary dwellings has been an increase um just over six and a half percent it's gone from 120 to 128 crimes this year. It is firmly on our radar. And when we talk of burglary, that also includes shed breaks and garage breaks. So it's not always um, within dwellings itself, as in breaking into a home. Um, from a neighbourhood point of view, the PCSOs are tasked daily with follow-ups of burglary offences. Uh, they go out, visit our burglary um, victims, give crime prevention advice, look at any CCTV opportunities that may be there. Obviously, then the forensic teams follow up on any burglary cases, looking for any evidence left behind in order to locate offenders. Um, very live just at the minute now up in Oscar. Um, there's a few cases ongoing. There's Operation Cantor, which is a response to car key burglaries. So a lot of the car key, the, a lot of the burglaries that we do see as well are in relation to car key burglaries. Uh, we're doing some work with the traffic officers up in Oscar, and actually there's been three offenders that have just been arrested and they're on remand for their offences. We've got one nominal firmly on our radar who we're actively looking for who may pop up in Oscar because he is active up there and he lives not too far away. So there's lots of ongoing work behind the scenes to try and reduce that. Um, and that's just all about the work in relation to CCTV, intelligence, tracking vehicles. Um, and uh, the offender managers do a lot of work around that as well. Um, so we are aware of the stats. Um, we respond to crime stats. We daily review the crime figures that happen up in Oscar. Um, and then obviously when we see emerging trends, any patterns, we look to jump on that as a neighbourhood team to see how we can reduce demands and calls from the public. Um, King Standing Circle, um, we see antisocial behaviour up there, groups of youths at times, silly incidents, egging vehicles, egging shops, pinching eggs from the shops. Um, but then as far as arson as well, some of the derelict shops there, they've had fires there, no doubt at the hands of the youths that are just running amok at times. Um, so we're aware of the group, we're aware of some of the main individuals and we're picking them off. There's an antisocial behaviour number that documents all our activity around that. There's one individual that's not too far away from where all the activity is and we're doing a lot of work with the Youth Offending Service in order to put restrictions on him um, to curb his behaviour and non-association and certain activities that he can and can't do. 
As well as that, we've got dispersal order uh, that was running last week. Uh, so our inspector can sign up dispersal orders for locations that are um, hitting high levels of activity in relation to antisocial behaviour. He did sign one up there for, for last week and obviously we'll continue to monitor and where possible we'll use our dispersal powers to combat the use there. Um, obviously, we haven't got members of the public in the meeting today, but it would just be to urge people to continue to report matters to us. Um, loads of times we'll be up there patrolling and we don't actually see it. Um, it's just look at the draw whether we come across the group on that particular day and time. So we are reliant on members of the public reporting the matters to us so we can respond to it. Um, again, should we be on duty because the neighbourhood team aren't on duty non-stop um, and then if we aren't on duty, you're relying on the response officers, but obviously jobs are graded uh, by emergency and the risk threat harm risk from the logs so if it is an asb matter if there's no officers free of course they're gonna go and attend the burglary that's in progress instead of the antisocial behavior matter but where we are on duty and it comes through we would endeavor to go and respond to that um, street watch, uh, street watch patrols are back in full swing now. Uh, the team regularly go out. I think we've got three um, street watch groups up in Oscar, um, and the team go out with them more often than not. But we contracted to twice, twice a month for each um, team. And I know Brad and Nick often go out with them. And I think we've seen a few familiar faces across the board here that have gone out at times with the street watch groups as well. So again, anyone that's interested in that, then by all means, get in touch and we'll look to do the relevant in regards to risk assessments and stuff and get you on board to join in with that. Um, we work close with the schools and new provision. Uh, we've had various inputs at different schools. We've got a schools officer as well who works with the schools. Um, We've started knife arch, knife arch operations at the schools, just random um, searches of the children to act as a deterrent. Obviously, we know knife crime is on the rise. Luckily for Oscar, youth crime is declined, um, but we, we just want to stay on top of that because we know there's a lot of children from outside of the area that attend the schools as well. Um, and there's different crime trends in different areas um, in particular. So we just want to stay abreast on that and keep keep the children on their toes, I suppose, that they cannot just freely carry knives and we will take action. Um, Summer camps, there's various summer camps, different provision going on over the summer. And again, we'll endeavour to get involved in that and try and keep as many kids off the streets causing the antisocial behaviour and keep them um, in active provision and um, things that are going to keep them involved, engaged and away from antisocial behaviour. Uh, as I say daily, we review the different locations, review the crimes and we will respond. Um, if we see a pattern of um, uh, antisocial behaviour, for example, at a location, then we will respond to that. But it's reliant on people calling in and telling us where these things are happening, um, short of us stumbling across it on, on our tour of duty. We do proactive patrols, um, more often than not on our late shifts, early shifts, they are tied up a lot with different arrest attempts commitments um, and various different bits and obviously getting out and about engaging the community but our late patrols more often than not they're proactive patrols a mixture of plain clothes and uniformed um, patrols uh, we've had an influx of student officers so we are quite flush at the minute in terms of officers but in the coming months that's only going to dwindle as the student rotations uh, drop off so you will see us out and about up in oscar um more particularly is probably the later half of the shift we end up in oscar um, because that's when we find a lot more activity happens it comes comes alive a bit more at, at night um early evening time um we've had many good results um proactive arrests stolen vehicles recovered and all that sort of stuff you can keep abreast of by Follow us on our Twitter account and you'll see what activity the team are involved in. I think that's it in a nutshell, unless anyone's got any questions. Who are you on mute, Barbara? There's me telling all you and I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for a very comprehensive report and thank you for the good work that's been going on in Oscars. And I am aware that there has been a lot of work being done. Um, 
Just one quick question for me, and that's because I'm, I do get complaints because residents in Oscar use the area, but it pro probably doesn't come under you. We're getting reports of a lot of shoplifting down at Princess Alice. Have you heard anything about that, Claire? No, I haven't. No. And again, unless it's being reported, we wouldn't be aware of that. Yeah. Okay, thank so you. That, that would come up on our overnight crimes, we'd see the thefts. Um, as a rule, we wouldn't respond as a neighbourhood team to theft from shops. But if there was a pattern and there was an offender that was being highlighted as being responsible, then that's something we could look at in order to reduce the demand. All right, thank you for that. I'll make sure that somebody reports it because it is quite prevalent down there. The princess, I'll, what, sorry? Princess Alice. Princess Alice. It's a retail area down by the Beggar's Bush. It's just on the border of King Standing. Okay. Uh, Khalid, you wish to speak? Yeah, if, if I may, Chair, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Sergeant Jones, for a very comprehensive report. Thank you for all the hard work that you do uh, in the area. We did, really do appreciate uh, the great commitment that you guys have uh, towards policing and keeping our communities safe. Uh, all I would say is, uh, what other support are you getting from uh, youth services and the local authority? And is there things that we can put in operation to try and support you to do that? Yeah, so we do. We have on the neighbourhood team, we have a youth spock. So one of the officers here, he is designated as the youth spock. So these youth visits that we talk of, he is responsible for liaising with youth services. I know we work closely with Catherine Norman youth services um, and actually she's the one that's been going out doing the visits for some of these youths causing the antisocial behaviour so we do have our links and we do have our youth um, om offender managers uh, that we can link into and perhaps they have closer partnerships with different external youth agencies but we do and we have seen different um, outreach youth workers as well i know on one occasion they were walking up the king standing circle and then it all mayhem went loose and there was kids everywhere and there was fighting going on and they was oblivious to it they just stumbled across it but yeah they, they were out actively just walking around engaging the youth letting them know with different provision in place and seeing if they can signpost any the youth anywhere so we we are in touch um, with services and we did work alongside them thank you anybody else got any questions for claire i think brenda had a question Councillor drink who me brenda brenda you haven't got your hand up brenda i did okay, did. okay. all right okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Claire. Um, Hello. What's going on about uh, these east scooters? Because we got one going around the Aldridge Road wreck, and he, he nearly uh, uh, run my partner over. He was uh, he was cutting my neighbour's hedge, and he just woo, nearly went went into him. And when I was out on street watch uh, last week with the lads, that there was one practically, you know, laughing at us. So what's happening about these east scooters? Because they they do go quite fast. They do. So technically, they, they are committing traffic offences and the e-scooters shouldn't be out. The only ones that should be out and about are the voice scooters because they've mm. got insurance. Uh, you need a provisional licence to drive the e-scooters, the VOI ones, and then VOI have their own insurance that covers them. So that's how that makes that legal. However, your run of the mill, I've got uh, a black e-scooter and I've just bought it. Um, mm. You can't just drive around on them. And they are committing traffic offences. The problem with that is... Nine times, nine times out of ten, the kids. And then do we look to put points on children's licences before they've even got one? Um, so more often than not, it's an education, um, what we try to give, and obviously let people know the risks and, if need be, return them home to parents. But that's reliant on us catching them also. Um, so the kids that just zip off away from us and ignore us, well, we're not inclined to then pursue after them and drive after them in the car for them to go out into a road and get swiped off it. And then it's kind of, well, why were you chasing them on the e-scooter? So we have to be balanced. Um, technically, by the law, by the book, yes, they are committing offences. But do we want to penalise children and affect their future licence that they may obtain? Um, it's perhaps not the stance we'll take. But then that's 
everything on its own merit. If it's one of the ASB nominals that are causing non-stop issues upon King's Standing Circle, they're already on our radar. And then we see them doing that. Then there's ways and means of targeting people. Um, but no, as a rule, it's more education. So I have stopped people before and I've asked them to take it home and they'll come off it and walk and say they didn't know. But I'm sure the next day they'll be back zipping around on it as well. But okay. it's, it's all about priorities and where, where do we go? There's a handful of officers we've got. Where do we want them concentrating their efforts? OK, thank you, Claire. No worries. Has anybody else got a question for Claire? Uh, Mr Williams has, uh, Councillor String. Yeah, it was just, just really to add to what uh, Claire has said. Um, when I do my agenda item regarding the Leisure Centre, our projects for... for young people at Great Bar Leisure Centre are all um, hubbed through what's called Safe Haven, which is a police um, run project based around trying to uh, use sport as activities in order to engage young people, particularly in the evenings. So it links with what Claire was saying about the police liaison officer and the and the work that we do closely, but I'll cover that in that agenda item. And then secondly, um, I just wanted to bring, bring people's attention to a nice event that will happen this Saturday, again, which has been set up with um, direct help from the police. And it's a community cohesion fair, which will take place at Fortis Academy from 11 o'clock in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm going to just read the flyer to you. We, we've advertised it to all the local schools and all the local primary schools. So um, it will involve community groups, music, delicious food and a special appearance from West Midlands Emergency Services to showcase the amazing work that they do, including emergency vehicles and police drones. So it's a lot. It's, it's up the service drive where the leisure centre is. So it's all based around the leisure centre, Great Bar Leisure Centre. And then we've got a sporting provision in the leisure centre doing some work with them, um, with children that come along on the day with their parents as well. So that's this Saturday. 11 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. Kanar Talabani, who's our uh, school's liaison officer, has been instrumental in helping set that up. Right, thank you. Any questions for Mr Williams? No? Right, thank you for that. Nobody else has got their hand up. Claire, if you want to stay, you can stay, but I know you're busy. If you need to go, then that's OK. OK. Um, next item on the agenda then, if there's no questions, is, uh, hang on, the Cabinet Member for uh, Fleet and Waste Management or Street and Street Scene and Parks is um, John O'Shea and accompanying him is Justin Hillier. Uh, John, we're going to welcome what your comments with regard to the closure of Petty Bar Depot and what effects that is going to have on the residents because residents are asking a lot of questions because of the closure. They think that it's going to increase the fly tipping. I'm trying to assure them that that's not going to happen and I hope I'm right. So can you touch on that, please? Of course, Chair. Thank you. Um, just to, to a brief meeting in, in what my portfolio covers, uh, it's, it's grandly titled Street Scene and Parks. It's mostly to do with bins. Uh, we put out something of the order 170 rounds a day across the city of Birmingham. Uh, that's about 27 million bins a year that we collect. And we clear something of the order of 1,000 tonnes of municipal waste every single working day. I've also got 591 parks covering some 14 square miles of Birmingham and bits beyond the city, uh, ranging from the two and a half thousand acres of Sutton Park down to the small neighbourhood parks. Uh, we serve something of about 1.2 million people in about 450,000 properties across the city. So it's a big operation. It is the largest uh, waste collection service in the UK. Uh, um, we've had been on a bit of a journey over the past few years. We'll, we'll probably all remember the strike action uh, the, towards the end of the 2019, 2010s. Um, I took over in 2019 and we were dropping a thousand roads a week, uh, not being collected. That is now down to an average of somewhere between four and 20, uh, depending on access issues. And there have been problems this week, in particular out of the Perry Bar depot. Um, we're being hit a bit hard by a couple of issues 
uh, across the service. Uh, one is uh, we have some members who are having their second jab and they're having a bit of a reaction to it. We've also had issues with uh, a number of people being having to isolate as well as being pinged by the NHS app. And that's taken out quite a number of people across the service. Uh, and and they, they disappear and then come back in. We have tried to backfill that with using uh, our street cleansing crews support. And they do a fantastic job, uh, but it also takes a resource away from keeping the streets clean. So it is a compromise to try and keep the service functioning as well as it can. Uh, but pay bars particularly badly hit this week. I understand there will be crews out uh, into the weekend to try and clear any uh, outstanding recycling, because that's a fortnightly collection. But we'll clear any residual uh, for the, the, the uh, for next week. Uh, you mentioned about pay bar closing. Yes, we'll be closing the pay bar uh, depot at the end of this month, and then it will close for best part of two years. It'll be open probably around Easter 2023, uh, and that's to allow us to redevelop the site. Uh, it, it's a it's a if you've ever been there, it's a pretty aging site. Uh, it's not survived very well. It doesn't meet the, the needs of a modern service. Uh, it's not a great place for the for the crews to be based at, and the uh, HRC that's based there isn't really very good. So uh, we need to improve that. It's a key site for us because it covers a lot of the north of the city, and it's, it's a waste transfer station. So all the crews bring the rubbish back in there, and that is then trucked down to Tisley for disposal or to full ashes for sorting for recycling. So it's a key site for us, and we're going to redevelop that into a modern uh, waste service with a, with a modern household recycling centre and appropriate accommodation for our crews. Now, in the meantime, the crews will be relocated to other sites to, to work out of there so that there shouldn't be any impact on the service on the streets. Uh, the, as for the HRC, I'm afraid that residents will have to use one of the four other HRCs. The nearest is probably going to be the one at Carter Bromwich, which is also one of our least used. So there is, there is spare capacity there uh, to take any waste that they want to dispose of. Uh, as to whether it increase fly tipping, that's something we, we find it very hard to control. We, we don't fly tip. And it is done by people who, who choose to do that. I think there is a very small crossover between people who would take their waste to the tip and those who would then choose to fly tip because they can't. I think fly tippers are going to fly tip, whether we've, we've got an HRC open or not. And the evidence is that that's, what, that's what's happening. We do have some support coming in. Uh, as you may be aware, we're investing £7.2 million this year into street cleansing in Cross City of Birmingham. And one of those innovations we're trying this year is a rollout of four what we're calling mobile HRCs. And that is uh, a recycling vehicle, a standard compactor vehicle with a crusher in the back, and another vehicle which will be there to take away stuff for reuse. And we're putting four of those out across the city. They'll be visiting every single ward. And uh, I believe the pay bar one is due in the next, next week or so. And that will, of course, be, be focusing a bit more on the pay bar area uh, over the next next uh, next year or so just to try and pick up some of the waste that's outstanding. The idea with this one is they will turn up to uh, locations across uh, the city and they will um, appear for a few hours and people can bring stuff along to the HRC and deposit it for recycling, reuse or disposal. Uh, we've, it's currently being soft trialled in Northfield. We've got our first vehicle in there, and it's proving quite successful. It, there's a bit of work to do to try and um, fine tune how we make it work. So we, we aren't launching it. We aren't briefing where it's going to be uh, until we get some of the more details ironed out. Uh, but I'm sure Justin will come back to you, back to you, uh, Barbara, uh, to uh, discuss where it can be located. We, we have some, we have some plans as to where we're going to place them already in the ASMs. Have really worked this out, but I think local information is really important uh, to to try and fine tune that. Uh, what we're also doing this year is we've got funding to support uh, four fly tipping crews uh, to clear waste across the city. We're putting out four brand new uh, what we call deep clean crews, and that comprises a, a small sweeper, a large sweeper, and uh, a, a waste collection crew to get in there and deal with particular hotspot issues that arise. Uh, we are deploying 
12 new CCTV cameras across the city to try and catch fly tippers. And we're taking through Cabinet next week uh, uh, a revised policy on CCTV usage. So we'll actually be able to publish those images in a, in a crime watch style way and ask people to identify those people that we we, we see fly tipping on our streets because we're not going to tolerate it. There's no reason why we should. We've also put um, extra resource back into our waste enforcement unit to work across the city to target issues like this. And we have six brand new officers working in the six worst affected wards in the city uh, to liaise with businesses and uh, residents to try and improve the situation in those worst affected wards. We'd like to do more on that, but there is a significant cost implication to put that out across the entire city. Also add in uh, three new crews to tackle graffiti. Uh, we're putting more support in for volunteers. We've got some great people out there who help to keep the neighbourhoods clean and tidy, and we're backing them up. We've already issued some 5,000 pieces of equipment, and that ranges from uh, litter grabbers, bag hoops, shovels, brushes, brooms. We, we've got our new uh, street street boss mini uh, carts, which will which can which carry two bags for a rubbish disposal and a range of tools. And we've issued out over 20,000 blue bags uh, to help our neighbourhood crew, uh, neighbourhood volunteers help keep, keep their areas tidy. And that's a brilliant bit of work they do. Uh, we're partnering up with Keep Britain Tidy this year to do some behavioural change work to try and improve the the city and also educate on uh, recycling. And... Uh, something I think else we're doing out there. Uh, oh, and of course, there's Love, Love Your Streets. Uh, which is something we, we, we've been running for a while. And that's also a hit team that will come into different parts of the city and deal with particular issues. That's, that, that, that's a, a multidisciplinary team, so that may well involve the police. It can involve the fire service. Uh, it will involve our highways team to look at issues on, on the road in terms of repairs and uh, where shops are encroaching onto the highway. Uh, it, it will, they will bring out our enforcement officers to look at uh, properties and shops that haven't got trade waste contracts uh, and we'll, we've also got Veolia will come on board to help educate people about what they can recycle and how because that's something we know is a big issue. A lot of areas people actually don't understand what we can recycle and how they can do it. So we're going to put some time into that as well. So it's a major package. It's the biggest investment in the city's uh, street cleansing in a generation and it's going to make a real difference to our city's streets. My final thing I always say to everybody is we need the help of the people of the city to make this work better. And key to that is don't support fly tippers. Somebody who comes to your door with the white van and says, I'll take that rubbish away 20 quid, it's not going to a licensed recycling site. That is going to end up somewhere on the streets of this city. And that can be in any ward of the city. It, it, uh, but it's more likely to end up in, frankly, our more deprived wards. That's where they really get hit by this stuff. So please don't support them. You are supporting criminals. Uh, where we have evidence, we, we do prosecute. We do seek jail time. We seek fines and we get, we get their cars off them and their vehicles off them to crush them. Uh, the city is not tolerating fly tipping. Uh, I was very intrigued to see a headline in, in, uh, on, on the Birmingham Live site yesterday. that Solly Hull are angry about how we're doing a better job than they are in tackling fly tippers. Uh, we are carrying out more enforcement work than they are because they aren't doing anything. So we're, we're doing significantly better. And they're actually genuinely worried that we are going to deter flight of from Birmingham and they're going to go across the border into Solihull. So we're upping our game, and but we need support of the people of Birmingham to help us do more and do better. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you for your report. Um, John, the closure of Pelly Bar Depot is a big thing for Oscars and it's an important issue. Um, how is it going to affect Oscars with regard to the crew? Are we still going to maintain our current crew? Because our current crew, you know, you've got to sing the praises where praise is due because, you know, they're quite good with what they do in Oscars. And we keep on top of the fly tipping in the main on Oscars. And... Uh, 
you know, Justin and everybody else is very cooperative towards us. So we're reluctant to see our crew get dispersed and we're not going to have the same crews operating. So we need to know what the mechanics of maintaining the standard that we've got now in Oscar is going to be when the Pedibar Depot closes down. Please, please don't forget, Barbara, it is, it is being closed for refurbishment, it will reopen. It's not. It's not closing and going away. It's closing, so we can I know, I know bring that. up to date, and we can uh, we can get that that depot ready for the future, uh, and to help our crews out. He Justin has his hand up, so I'll bring him in in a second. But uh, I don't. I'll, I'll be surprised there's going to be any changes as a result of this temporary closure to the crews that you get. Uh, yeah. If I can pass across to Justin there. Okay. Hello, chair. Hello, uh, Justin. Chair, it, it, we're not going to move any of the crews from out of Oscar. The street cleansing crew will stay the same, the same crew you, you've currently had for years now. Um, obviously, it's just, we've just got a, a different way of working, uh, especially when we have to remove some of our refuge collection vehicles to, uh, to disperse to, other, to be based at another site while, we, while the majority of the work is undertaken at Perry Bar. For now, we'll be on site, we'll be working. Um, it's just towards, I think towards November, we're looking at moving most of our RCV fleets out of Petty Bar um, to another depot uh, or to another piece of land that we've got. Uh, it, it may mean they've got some more travelling, but we'll, we'll put in place uh, uh, work so that, you know, the crews will, will be able to complete their rounds. Um, our crew should stay the same. It's just that, uh, you know, the brunt of the work is going to be based at Petty Bar, but we'll still be operating from here. Uh, through the works. Right. Thank you. Is there any more questions for John and, and or Justin? Khalid, you like to come in? You got your mic on, Khalid. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, John, just in terms of uh, uh, the Commonwealth Games, uh, obviously not having the, uh, <coughs> the, the, the uh, service there at Perry Bar. How will we be able to cater for? I mean, obviously there'll be quite significant uh, refuse to be collected uh, around the Commonwealth Games when people are coming and entering. How will we manage that? We will. Uh, I, mean, I think it, it, there's probably no good time to close Perry Bar to the public, uh, and we have to do the same thing with. Uh, we're also going to be merging Montague Street and, and uh, Redfern Road over in the east of the city onto, onto a brand new site. That's a bit easier because that, we, we build a new site first, then build a new cross. Um, there's no good time. I suspect actually it, it might not be a bad, it might not be the, the worst time to close it because access around there is likely to be quite challenging uh, uh, for, the, for a decent part of next year. So putting it elsewhere may actually make it a bit easier. I know it's being convenient to people. But the work's got to be done. This, this, the, the, the depot is really not fit for purpose anymore. Um, but as regards to the, the Commonwealth Games, most of that is outside our remit. The Commonwealth Games itself uh, have their own contracts, and their own way of managing waste, which doesn't involve City Council. So um, the, that, that's a matter for them to deal with. Um, if we were involved with that, then the waste would have to get down to our tiny site for disposal or to four ashes for recycling. So the, the, the impact on, on that is, is likely to be very limited. We, 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 still, we still have crews out there. If we have, if we have extra crews on to help, help keep the streets clean around the city, they'll be based somewhere where they can come and work. Okay. I'm hoping we'll be able to say you won't see any significant impact from, moving, from the site being closed. You finished, Kelly? Yeah. Uh, yes, any, thank you. Any, yes, fur any further questions for John? Speak now and forever, hold your peace. You're having an easy day today, John? No. I know, this is very Is easy. there any questions for Justin? Do you want to say anything further, Justin? No, Councillor. Um, obviously, regarding the, the, the Commonwealth Games, obviously we've done a piece of work already as street cleansing manager regarding the Commonwealth Games. And we know what resources we require to keep the games clean while the, while the games are on and obviously prepare the games beforehand. Um, that piece of work has been done with uh, Darren Share and obviously, uh, and Costed. And obviously, when the games start next year, we'll be, you know, we'll be still running from Perry Bar for street cleansing services, or majority of street cleansing services. So, you know, 
while the ref cold won't be based here, the, certainly the street cleansing will be. So we'll be able to keep on top of the roads in and around the areas to keep the to keep the impact on the games to a minimum. Right. Thank you for that, Justin, and thank you for your help that you give to me as a councillor. Um, right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is, um, I think it's Brenda. Chair, if I, if I have a wish to leave. Yeah, yes, yes, John. Okay, if you thank need, you all. If you need to go, I know you're busy. I don't, I'm afraid. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Right, Can I go as well, Chair, right. please? Yes, yes, Justin. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you bye -bye. for coming. Can no I thank you for coming? Yeah. No problem at all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, Justin. Bye bye. Thank you, Justin. Right, the next item is uh, Brenda Wilson. Brenda is going to give us an update on what's happening down on the uh, Queslet Nature Reserve. Brenda? Can you hear me, Bob? Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Brenda Wilson. I'm the Secretary of the Friends. Hi, Kelly. I'm the Secretary of the Friends of the Queslet Nature Reserve. Very proud to be uh, the Secretary. Founded by my cousin, the late and lovely Councillor Keith Linnicott, who we all missed a bit. Uh, can I just, uh, if I don't know Shay's uh, still about, can I just mention a big thank you to Andrew Wright, the performance manager of the Perry Bar, Birmingham Parks and that, that Nurseries. They clean the bins on the reserve and in Aldridge Road uh, wreck and they do a fantastic job and it's thanks to them that the reserve looks so beautiful and clean. Uh, we, we, were, we had to go ahead about five weeks for um, uh, our first work volunteer work day on the reserve and uh, it was fantastic barbara came along we had um we was joined by our colleagues from team watch the west midlands bird club and the street street watch coordinator as well as james from the ranger service we had a fantastic time we all enjoyed ourselves the weather was uh, the fantastic the camaraderie was brilliant. We did, did a lot of um, uh, path clearing because there was a lot of overhanging branches. We cleared all that back. We engaged with the public, which was great. Uh, what I'm trying to do for the future, we're getting the um, kids involved. We've got, um, um, I've got like bird spotting charts to give to the children. We've got badges, colouring charts. It's, it's also, we can get... Uh, the kids involved, start them early, get them interested in conservation and the environment. Future plans, and you'll have to excuse me if I get upset, but we're trying to make arrangements to get the memorial the memorial tree for Keith and his ashes scattered because they still haven't been scattered yet. We've got two more memorial trees, one for our, our, our treasurer, Brian Brooks, who sadly died at the beginning of the year, and another member. And also, I'm working with the parks to see about getting a, a path named after Keith as well. Um, that's about it, really. It's the reserve is looking fantastic. It's a little bit of free. We're not having a lot of trouble with the antisocial behaviour. The, the, the police do do uh, regular walks on there. We've got a street watch. Um, and... Uh, oh, we've got a lot, lots of clubs. We involve the, uh, the, the West Midlands uh, Bird, Bird Club are, are involved, and they're going to sponsor a, a, a notice, a sign, a bird, bird sign to go by the, um, the lake. And uh, that's that, um, that is about it, really. Right. Thank you for that, Brenda. Um, Brenda does a fantastic job down at the Nature Reserve. Uh, her and John are what we call our resident caretakers, and we thank them for all the hard work they do. But needless to say, you know, the Crescent Nature Reserve is the jewel in the crown mm. for Oscott, and we're very protective of it. And certain people at certain times seem to have their eye on other plans for the reserve, and we fight it all the way. We always have done and we always will do. So thank you, Brenda and John, for all the work that you do down on the Nature Reserve and all the other people that are involved. Thank and you. Thank you for your support, Barbara. You've been brilliant since we lost Keith. OK. Thank right. you. Kelly? Yeah, just to say thank you, uh, Brenda. Thank you for all the great thank work you, Kelly. You, uh, uh, and John and, and certainly Barbara continuing to support that is fantastic. Uh, I think what's really important is is that 
I certainly will support it more. Uh, I'll come to any of the events that you want, want to call me to. Any issues in terms of naming, and certainly we thought we said we will do some something about uh, putting a plaque up for Keith as well. Uh, so very happy to do that. Just let me know what the details. I will do that. Uh, mm -hmm. And and really this really Barbara is quite right to say this. We need to fight for this. This is a real important bit of nature. Uh, I'm sure as the heads also. Uh, nodding his head. We can use some of the children from the school as well. And it'd be a really fantastic resource for us to use. Uh, and, and I really, really, Barbara, it's worth fighting for every inch of the way because this is a fantastic uh, opportunity. This is a, 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 a fantastic asset that we have and we should support yeah. it as much as we can. So I'm very happy to do that. Thank you. I mean, the uh, headmaster, uh, um, we would like to be more involved with your school. We'd like to see more school children, uh, you know, doing nature studies over there. This is our ambition is to get more youth involved because never, never more so now so with the environment crisis that we're going through. We need the youth on board. Right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if I, I've got, Williams. I think Neil, Neil was before me, um, but I'm happy to respond to Brenda. So, so I had my hand up, Brenda, for exactly that point, really. First of all, to thank you for your efforts there. Um, Going back oh, probably 12 years, we used to take a group, I used to take a group over there and we used to, we cleared some rubbish and things from the site um, when I first met Keith. Then there was a bit of a hiatus in the school. With my role now, um, I'd like to talk to you outside this meeting about building it into our curriculum. I would love that. So in essence, we've got New Year 7s that will start with us in September. Oh, I'd love to get all of those children probably staggered over about three or four days out to spend uh, the morning in the reserve and then build it up through the year groups. Um, we've got an army of volunteers with the young people who would, who would be happy to, uh, you know, help with volunteering because um, it's part of, of that character curriculum that we're really keen to build here. Um, and also some expertise amongst staff, maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm a trained ecologist, even though I'm Ooh. a now. So, so we've got an active interest, really. We've got a nature garden in school, and we try and link the two. But maybe outside of this meeting, um, to build on the things everybody's mentioned, you know, Khalid was saying about how important green spaces are, oh, and, and absolutely, and it is the, it's the young people that will make or break, you know, the protection and the success of the environment going forward. So... I'll try uh, through Barbara. If I contact you, Brenda, uh, we'd like to invite you into school and um, to make some plans. Uh, well, we, that would be a love to Barbara. I would love that. Please do. Can I just say, Mr. Williams, that you invite in, include the uh, councillors in those discussions? Okay, yes. because uh, will Barbara? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'll go through you, Barbara, and uh, for contact. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sorry, can I just Neil, say, you, just say, Neil, you wanted just to Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, I, I hope to see you on uh, Saturday, uh, but certainly also would like to have a chat about the school with you. So perhaps we can pick some time in to have a chat, see how we can work together on that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank Neil, you. you got your hand up. Th thanks very much indeed, Chair. And I'd like to echo the comments that have been made um, by, by Councillor Dring by RMP Khalid and also by Mr Williams as well and um, Brenda you you um, John and, and the whole team do a, a marvelous job but um what I'd like to do is um, give another offer on top of that because we do have some area based funding um, that's available so to support some of the things that you're looking to do through our neighborhood network scheme we'll be able to support some of that and I'll be speaking a little bit later about celebrating communities fund um, that you can also apply for um, to help you with some of those, um, you know, those plans that, that you have and also to support the ongoing um, fantastic work that, that you're doing down at um, the reserve as well. So I just wanted to, to add those, Chair, if that's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. That's fantastic news. Well, thank you're you. Darius, you, had you got your hand up, Councillor? I was just, I was just going to, what, what you were saying about being part of those discussions with the um, Mr. Williams and Brenda and regarding the nature reserve, I'm, you, you mentioned my point for me, Councillor Drink. So, yeah, I'd love to be part of those discussions as well. And I think the idea is that you both just share. Well, the, the nature res reserve belongs to all of us and uh, yeah. we all protect it. We and, all protect it. And just to echo what Neil said, they're echoing all the other comments. 
um, the work that you all do in the nature reserve is fantastic. And um, believe me, it, it's a reserve for everyone and it's a fantastic place. It really is. So, but you mentioned my comments for me, but um, uh, Council Drink, so that's fine. Okay, all right. Um, any more questions for Brenda? No? Right. So, Mr. Williams, I think you're next on the agenda and you're going to update us on uh, what the state of play is, especially with regard to the reopening of the uh, leisure centre, which we're very interested in. And as you know, Keith and I were very, very keen on still trying to keep a community hub within that to fit in with what the uh, academy is doing now in its present form. It was the school then, but now it's the academy. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Dring. So I'll just put a little bit of history uh, for the Leisure Centre. Going back 10 years, it was a community hub. It was used uh, from eight o'clock in the morning through till nine o'clock at night. Um, a variety of different activities based around mainly sport, but also um, I'm aware that things like mother and baby groups use the facility. Um, in essence, what happened is 2014, it was decommissioned by the local authority based on um, funding ultimately through austerity. It was the austerity drive that, that put the nails in the coffin. Um, we were asked to take the centre on, but take it on in its entirety with costs, but we had no funding attached to it. So we couldn't uh, actually take the centre on to run it in the evenings and the weekends due to um, those costs that we received no funding for. So we, we've kept the centre ticking over really for our own students. So it, it's been used consistently between eight in the morning and I would say 4.30 p.m. But um, obviously the, the loss of opportunities in the evenings and weekends for the community, and particularly for young people, so 18 months ago, uh, when we restructured the school and I came into post, we, we, it was one of our uh, sort of priorities to try to find some solutions for it. Uh, COVID then came along. COVID was a threat initially, but potentially through funding has become a bit of an opportunity for us. So what we've done is as follows. I'm going to share with you in a moment um, a, a diagram which shows the holiday provision offer that we've got there because there's something happening five days a week, often going into the evenings for young people. So in essence, what we've done is that um, we work really closely with um, with the local authority and with local agencies and particularly the police. So 12 months ago, we started discussions with um, West Midlands Police and their Safe Haven project. So the Safe Haven project ultimately is community and youth police uh, officers, many of them who don't wear uniform, um, they sort of sit in the background, if you like, um, in, in order to ensure that the provision that's put on, particularly in the evenings, is safe and appropriate. The front of that project is a company called Spurt Sporting Elite. And there's a gentleman called Seb Hamilton, who's actually an ex-pupil and a local resident, who's a bit of a mover and a shaker. I think, Neil, you may know Seb. Um, you may have met him. Um, I certainly do. He's brilliant. Yeah, so so he he's a he's a golden nugget that we've found over the last twelve months. And since March, since the children came back to school in March, we've been running extracurricular provision every night after school. Now, in addition to that, so, so the, we've got the safe haven which oversees the whole project for the whole week, and sporting elite to that main um, partner. The two additional partners then is, are the Aston Villa Foundation. Um, and the work that they do around sport and mentoring of young people. And then Birmingham Rockets basketball, um, obviously, which is the, the basketball equivalent of, of Aston Villa, if you like, in terms of um, a premiership level for basketball. They work with us as well now, at least one or two days a week. And their, their um, provision is going on into the evening up to eight o'clock or even nine o'clock with, with Rockets, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So... Um, we use the centre extensively during the school day, but what we're really keen to do is extend that provision into the evenings, which we've now managed to find a partial solution for. Um, I'm going to be really open about our funding. So we've applied for £60,000 through the government so, um, holiday fund to run a project this summer, but we've also extended that to run for 12 months and we've been successful in obtaining that bid. And then we've also obtained another £3,500 uh, from, uh, in effect, it's the Youth Sports Trust 
uh, and Sport England combined about reopening facilities post COVID. And we're applying for another three and a half there. So there could be seven thousand pounds with police safe haven. They bring they haven't got huge amounts of funding, but they bring some money with them as well. So we're able to now invest in mainly equipment and coaches. Um, the position with the local authority at the moment is that it's um, that they, they still want to pursue, pursue a community asset transfer. So what that means is that um, a provider would bid to use the centre in evenings and weekends but it would be on a on a costed model that would they'd be able to obviously have income from and pay their 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 coaches and their staff. Um, we are sort of this will be the third time we've we, we've attempted this. We had one applicant for the first year who pulled out after he couldn't make uh, make it, it financially viable. The last time just before COVID that was advertised we didn't get anybody apply and at the moment the city have got the advert out and we're not aware of any application so we're we're still building internally really um i'm going to just share with you uh what we've got going on this this holiday and by all means i can send this slide across because as the as um the officer was saying earlier in the meeting and other people have commented it's a great way to signpost young people into some provision um so i'm just going to pull that up now to bear with me Okay, can everybody see that? Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah. So, so literally, we've got um, Monday through to Saturday. So, every day there's a there's a sports camp which is based around primary age school children. So it's free of charge. Um, all the food is provided as well, and it runs from ten till three, from Monday through to Friday. On Saturday, then that offer is extended to a lower age group of four-year-olds up to age 12-year-olds and there's a staggered program there of like um, a, a sport-based club but they also do arts and crafts and things for those age groups. If I'm to come to the bottom row, so City of Birmingham Rockets are here, they will, they work with us, um, they want to come in from four till nine o'clock which will start um, this, not this coming Monday but the Monday after um, and that will be open to a range of different ages including older teenagers and young adults. And they, they again, will stagger their times. Um, younger children will come in at four o'clock and those older older teenagers will be uh, from seven o'clock onwards. And they'll agree that with the, with the kids who come along and join. So that's a really nice provision for Mondays and we can signpost groups of children into that. Then on, um, on the Wednesdays, then two till five o'clock, uh, we've got um, 80 places available um, for different sports. Football will underpin it, but there'll be different sports on there, all free of charge to young people again. So if there's a group of 14, 15 year olds that are kicking the heels and maybe getting into a bit of bother, um, it would be ideal to signpost them down to the centre. Sebony's team are really well skilled in engaging um even tricky young people and, and, and unpicking, you know, their, those barriers and getting them involved. And that's really good. Then on Thursdays, we've got what we call in the Safe Haven Youth Club. And that will run from three o'clock till eight o'clock. A hundred places available for young people again. And we're signposting some of our vul vulnerable families and vulnerable young people into there, knowing that they need engaging. But by all means, again, it is something just to have on your radar that you could actually provide a solution of where those young people could go. So that's the provision that we'll run this summer. Um, in September, the provision, obviously we're open again, so the top line becomes a little bit irrelevant because all the kids are back in school. But from 3.30 onwards, we'll be looking to run provision. We'll continue with the Monday, the Wednesday and the Thursday. But we're looking currently looking to extend that into Tuesdays, Fridays and potentially Saturday mornings as well um, for that teenage group. So as you can see, we're... Rather than talk about it in the meeting I came to a few months ago, I wanted to try and provide something a bit more tangible. Um, and this is the offer that, that will go across the whole of the, the six week period. And then that will continue, as I say, for the next. The funding we've got is for 12 months. Um, and we hope to obviously obtain more funding uh, as and when to, uh, we move forward. Um, the threats and risks to the to the centre really are those more substantive um, repairs and, and refurbishments so we do know that in the next three years we're going to need to find some money we've done condition surveys on the building 
Um, and there is some substantial investment needed over the next three years. But we know that once we've got this embedded as, a, as, as extended provision, particularly into the evenings and weekends, it will give us good credibility to apply for some larger funding pots um, that, ha that will be available, uh, some of which will be through the, the National Lottery funding. So in essence, that's, uh, that's what we wanted to share with, uh, with, with you all today. Right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Uh, can I just say, you, you've told us all, all about what we're going, going to be doing for the young people, and I commend that. And it's, you know, it's a dream coming true that we're occupying young people and keeping them off the streets. So I, I congratulate you on the programme that you've drawn up there. Um, can I just ask you, have you got any plans for the wider community on the social side of it? Because there is an earnings uh, pathway, isn't there, for making some kind of money to help support some of the things you want to do in the centre. But because the rooms used to be let out, you know, for the social scene of the older public, you know, the surrounding public. Is there any plans to start doing that again? Because it is a, a means of getting revenue into the club. And uh, the other question before you go is that I would like to know is, are our plans working to minimise the antisocial behaviour when the kids leave school at leaving time because of some of the measures that we've put in and especially the opening up the front like we did, you know, which Councillor Lineker was very largely involved in, you know, on trying to cut down some of the uh, concerns we had with the traffic outside of the school. Yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. So, so firstly then, um, one of the reasons I came to join, made contact with you, Councillor Dring, um, 12 months ago, was it was exactly that, in to try to open up ideas and discussions around um, the school in general, you know, and, and the school's perception, reputation, and how we interact with the community, uh, but with a specific focus on the leisure centre. Um, my area of, of so-called expertise, I suppose, would, is with young people. Um, we are very open-minded um, and really would love to extend the use of the centre to any type of community group. So my expertise doesn't extend into all those different groups and how we would fund that and how we would make that work. But we are really keen to just get around the table and just explore those ideas. If that centre was open from eight in the morning till sort of 10 o'clock at night, seven days a week, that would be our ideal. That's kind of our vision. Um, we've partly done that and we're really open to suggestions and ideas and where the need lies within the community to extend it further. So that's the first question. And so I've, I know there's some hands up. Do, should we stay on that question to begin with, Councillor Dring? Yeah. So, Neil, you, do you want to come in on this? Um, Khalid was actually before myself. Um, okay. uh, yeah, are, are you okay? Um, I, I just uh, wanted. Neil, carry on. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I mean, I just wanted to commend uh, Mr. Williams really um, in, in terms of what you've managed to achieve um, over the last 18 months. It's absolutely fantastic. So, the likes of Sporting Elite, I know that they've been really proactive in the ward, particularly um, during COVID 19, where they actually changed their provision from being out and out sports, youth, health and wellbeing providers to providing um, emergency food support and befriending and all sorts of things for a lot of the families that actually do make use of the school and, and, and the kind of wider ward. So they've been brilliant. So um, Seb and his team did mention that they had contacted you about the possibility of um, extending provision within the school. So I'm really pleased at how that has um, panned out and they have received funding from us through the local authority in order to do that. And, and the fact now that you've ex extended it to, to, the, to the rockets and um, you know the safe haven um, kind of initiatives that you're de developing as well through the school, I think is absolutely fantastic in, in terms of a, a real good starting point mm -hmm. for extending the use. So I'd like to commend you on that. Um, in regards to um, the extended provision, my, my colleague, so I presume it would be Dave Wag, um, etc. That will be kind of, and also Mark Byrne. Uh, I'm aware that um, it's, it's their kind of area of expertise 
you know, although I come from a sport and leisure management background, you know, that they, they do that. I'm in community development now. Um, so they are helping, if you like, with that um, asset transfer process. And it has been long and, and, and we haven't had success. But I think you're absolutely right in terms of looking at other alternative models. If that doesn't come to fruition, um, it's something that we really do need to do, you know, to match the benefit of the the the, the school um, or the academy. But as well as that, um, we have to take into consideration the funding um, that um, you need to recoup as well. Um, so wh wherever I can support in that from a community development and support perspective, um, I, I, I'll do that and I'll, and I'll feed in. Um, but yes, really, really pleased to see where where um, it's going. I know that Councillor Linicor has invested, gr you know, greatly in um, you know the development, and and, it, and is really passionate as is Councillor Dring have, have been absolutely fantastic. So we really do need to continue that dialogue and and try and pool our resources and expertise where we can to make sure that local hub, which is how I view it, is is as used as widely as possible and um, for the local community. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Go on, Miss well. Williams. You want to come back? Yeah, thank you, Neil. Yeah, uh, and um, you've helped me join a few dots up there as well in terms of um, your name. I've heard a lot about through Seb mainly and Councillor Drink. So thank you. I understand how that meshes together now. With the community asset transfer, um, you say that's one option, but I, I know all along the councillor said, but if you come up with another way of trying to fund it through grants or whatever, we're just there. Th th we're all on the same page, you think, aren't we, with how we want we to build it used? Yeah, we, we are, Mr. Williams. And, and, and again, um, for example, the team that I work in, we, we collate kind of all of the funding opportunities that are available, um, you know, for organisations and stakeholders and what have you. So, so we do that. And there's also area based funding, sometimes not large pots, but they're little pots that we can collectively work together, um, you know, to try and um, put resource where, where it's needed. So where we can do that, we will. And then, you know, fortunately, we've got the MP and, and you, we've got other wider stakeholders that when it comes to more national budgets and things that we can have a look and see how we can match things to hopefully, um, you know, develop and, and move in the direction of the, the ward priorities, really. Well, thank you. Khaled, you wanted to come in? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Williams. I think uh, fantastic work that you're doing. Uh, at, at the centre. It's been a resource that's been really lost uh, and thank you for bringing it back uh, into public uh, sort of play. Uh, it'll certainly help the young people uh, and fantastic work. And one of the key things is that we've got to keep young people engaged, uh, particularly during the holiday period and fantastic that you're providing food for them as well, because that's one of the big issues uh, during the summer break. Uh, not all people are able to have that access. Uh, to, to food and young people particularly. So it's in all fronts, it's absolutely fantastic. Totally uh, congratulate you for that. Uh, I think also uh, in relation to what Neil was saying as well, I'm very happy to support you, uh, even in terms of the community asset transfer. Uh, I think the council need to seriously look at this and look at the difference that you've made. Uh, and that alone, I think, warrants uh, for them to look at delivering a service. Uh, this, uh, the fundamental idea of the community asset transfer was to provide provision for people in the community. Uh, and I don't know why they want to bid for the third time. Uh, I, I find that completely astonishing. Uh, and so certainly, uh, hopefully, if I can catch up with you on Saturday, uh, we'll discuss that. Perhaps we can have a meeting at the school later on. Uh, to follow some of this stuff through. Uh, and also, Councillor Dring is absolutely right. If we can provide provision for people in the evening, particularly the elderly and, and different types of group who need some of that engagement, of course, you require funding to do that. Nobody can do it uh, for nothing. Uh, these things cost. Uh, and, and as Neil said again, I'm very happy to have both local and national uh, and other charities that actually give funding uh, to support elderly people. Uh, well, older people, let's not just say just elderly people. Uh, I think somebody uh, past 60, I, I think a lot of people need a lot of support in different ways. Uh, there are also issues in relation to health uh, that I need to support people with. Uh, and I think that's something uh, with the facility you have, you can put that in. I think the asset transfer can be done quite easily. Uh, and certainly I'm happy to go with you to a meeting or do a virtual meeting with the council uh, to support 
the, the principle of what you're doing, which is fantastic. Uh, and that's what we're here to do. And that's what you've done is, is an example, not just to uh, Birmingham, but I think nationally, uh, the sort of work that you're doing. And I'd certainly like to support, support that uh, nationally. Uh, to be able to do that. I'm very happy to join in. Um, you can get my details of Council Drink, uh, all the details, and let's let's have a chat and see how we can move this forward, but certainly happy to support you in any way you want. Yeah, re really appreciate that, Khalid. Um, th that's just wonderful news for us, really, both yourself and, and Neil. Um, so Saturday, I'll be, I'll, I'll be here on Saturday, and we'll actually hub it around the, the leisure centre, so you'll get to see uh, both inside and, and the condition of the building, which isn't isn't um, drastically poor, but you'll see that, it, that, that where we're at with it, and but also the scale of it, it's a huge um, resource, and the size of the sports hall in there is just immense. I don't think they actually build buildings that big anymore, um, so it really is something we want to we want to protect. I'll be um, I'll be on site from probably about uh, quarter past one onwards on Saturday, Khalid. Um, I'm, I'm doing. I'm finishing it. Up, finishing the, the the day off. I was due to be there all day, but part of my family are isolating, and it's, it's had a bit of a knock on. But our staff will be on site from ten o'clock onwards. Uh, starts at eleven, but I'll certainly be there from about quarter past one, I believe. So I'd, I'd um, look out to, to meet with you there. It'd be brilliant. Excellent. We'll do that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Is, is there is there any more uh, questions? No. So, so I was just going to answer your second point, um, Councillor Dream, oh, just about, about it's okay, it's just about about slightly different about traffic and thing outside. So, as you know, um, we've we've com fully completed now the front of school um, transport hub, the bus the bus hub there. Yeah. Um, we've had a little bit of um, a sticking point yet again by trying to get National Express the bus the bus companies to actually uh, agree to send buses there but we had a bit of a breakthrough yesterday myself and um campus principal mr otero who you'll get to meet we we went out to the bus garage in digbeth and met with the main managers there they're going to try to get us 1997 and 128 uh for the end of the school day uh starting in september which will take the majority of the children um off the uh, off the street as in queuing at the bus stops down by the shops um, part of the provision we're providing in the leisure centre means that um, a, quite a lot of children stop past 3.30 now. So that helps with transport because it just means that we haven't got everybody leaving in the same 20 minute block. It's spread over more an hour and a half, two hours. So that certainly will have an impact. We would like to, we would like to see more um, support from the bus companies, but financially it's their issue really that they just they've got a covid grant at the moment they've got reduced fund uh, sort of funding model going into next year but i may be coming back through this meeting for ideas of, of how we might try to extend that transport i mean we've got we're a very large school 1600 young people a lot of our young people will travel in now from perry bar aston uh, Hansworth area as well as our traditional catchment which would have been more the Hawthorne and King Standing and Great Bar so those two bus services it's 997 and 28 we just want to make sure the capacity is there to to get the children going home safely and um, and the reason being is to a to reduce parking b to reduce any perceived antisocial behavior issues um, we also still have um, nine staff out in the community after school so we've got three staff on duty in the morning, escorting the kids up from buses. And there's approximately nine staff starting at the school gates, going all the way down to the shops and the bus stops, supervising children for 45 minutes after school as well. So any of your residents that talk to you directly, Councillor Dring, we would be happy to speak with them to find out exactly where the problem is. And we would investigate and send staff to those locations and unpick what's happened. We would follow follow a restorative model with the children in that we would ask the children to find a solution to find an apology for those residents and maybe even face to face apologize, uh, if not in writing, because it's part of the restorative practice that we now have introduced into the school. So we've we've got the capacity to support that. One question I was going to ask in this meeting, which is directly relevant, is that um, Police, the, we've asked for the police to, to come down and look at parking again outside the primary and the secondary. They've been really honest with us and said they just, you know, the capacity at the moment means that's that's still not something they're actively pursuing for schools. One thing that did work was um, 
about 18 months ago was the local authority parking car, which is a small car with a very large camera on the top, which was taking photos of illegally parked cars and then prosecuting. Um, I wondered if, if Councillor Dring, you, were, you knew anything about the availability of that coming back into the postcode? That that's the first thing I've heard. First time I've heard those mentioned. But I was going to bring up the question of the parking, especially around the uh, primary school and the the you know the the residents there are constantly uh, ringing us about the parking outside the properties. And there's one particular gentleman who is disabled and he can't even uh, get near his own property. I mean. It's quite thoughtless of some of the parents, actually, you know, and looking at the age group of some of the uh, pupils, you know, I'm I'm surprised that they're still having transport into school, you know, when they've got such a public uh, service on offer, you know, and there are school buses and things like that. But th there is an issue with residents in that area about the parking. So um, it's a concern, but I mean, I will make inquiries on the question that you've raised, and I'm sure Councillor Sandu will as well. And yes. uh, we'll see whether Jane Francis or Kate Booth are aware of it and see whether we can direct them to, uh, you know, that particular area, because there are a lot of plans around schools and having vehicle free areas yep. outside the schools. And I think I know it's a main artery, but uh, from when it, for, for, for parking purposes, I don't see that it would be possible to achieve. No, that uh, the, the the local authority parking car that I mentioned certainly had a started to have an impact. Um, I think you'll find that parking will reduce um, will be a little bit better in September. And the reason why we've got more cars at the moment is that some families are still a bit anxious of using buses because of COVID nineteen and just in, infection risk. But we, we're seeing that anxiety reduce really week on week now. And we would hope in three months' time that um, people are back on public transport like they were two years ago. Right. Thank you for that. Is there any more questions to Mr Williams? Um, just, just a comment, please, Chair, if, if that's OK. Yeah. So um, I used to support Councillor Linicor with the meetings that he regularly um, had at the school and um, you know they were really really good around safer travel routes to school if you recall councillor drinkers yeah, you attended as well. so, so i organized that um, that vehicle that you're talking about mr williams through the safer travel team so so what i'll do um i'll find out who the contacts are and then councillor drink if i can get you to contact the necessary officers um, I'm sure that we'll be able to schedule for it to to come round again because it is a resource that the City Council yeah. has. So, yeah, leave, leave that with me to find out that, that information. I'd also like to see the meetings uh, reassume, you know, when we're able to, that we used to have, you know, when yeah. all the schools in the area attended those meetings. Because you need all the schools on board to be able to achieve some of the things. Even as far as the leisure centre is concerned, you're going to pull the other schools in. So those meetings would be very useful now. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. OK. So when we can, Mr Williams, we'll start resuming our meetings. <laughs> yes, excellent. Yeah, um, I'll talk to you outside of the meeting, Councillor Drink. Schools and Police Panel is another meeting which covers the main secondary schools in North. Yeah. Um, it's called the Perry Bar Panel is actually what it's called. I actually chair that panel. That might be another panel for you to come into, um, yeah. you know, to, to just listen to, to the various initiatives and things that are going on. A lot of it's based around safeguarding of young people. But of course, that extends into things like travelling. It's a big issue at the moment, isn't it? And there's a lot of work being done. And I think we should tap into some of the work that is being done, you know, from Oscott. You know, we've got a lot of schools in Oscott and I think it would be beneficial for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Darius, you want to make any comments? Uh, no, I was just going to uh, comment on the, the parking situation, but uh, once again, um, yeah, lots of residents from, I think you've got so many schools in just a collection of a few roads so close together. Um, lots of residents have brought the issue up um, and about that's first I've heard about the car as well. And I think that would be a brilliant idea if it was an effect. But um, one thing I do agree with is with the pandemic, 
with people now choosing not really to go on the bus, well, still being apprehensive to take the bus. I, I, I agree with uh, Mr Williams. I really do hope that uh, the problem will ease off a bit in September when you'll get a bit more confidence to go on public transport once again. Um, I think I think the schools and the parking is one of the big issues that, that I think with one of those schools meetings, um, mm -hmm. I think it would be great to have one of them and just talk with all the schools because it's an issue that we all, you would all share and residents across the board share as well. That was my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Darius. Right. Is that it? Right. Can I thank you very much, uh, Mr Williams, and uh, thank you for bringing our uh, leisure centre back to life. It's been very much missed and uh, I hope we'll soon see people queuing up to use it. You know, I mean, there's a lot of going on there. And, you know, we ought to make people, you know, they should be available to use it. So we need some publicity. Yeah. We maybe, need a newsletter. Yeah, let, let's look next term at maybe getting some other generations in from the local community as well. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if even in the school day, we would get some of our children to come and to come and uh, meet you and do some positive uh, joint yeah. joint sort of projects together. Yeah, thank you, thank you, and thank you for coming. Right. Uh, the next uh, item on the agenda is um, is it Neil? Uh, I think it is, and I'm conscious of time, so I'm, I'm going to be. Um, as, as well, quick I as hope I you're all going to stop and listen to the MP. <laughs> <laughs> I will be fine. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm, I'm quickly going to talk about celebrating communities fund. Um, but rather than um, just talk, what I'm going to do is just to show you a really quick um, video, if I, if I can, for those of you that aren't familiar with the with, with the fund. If I could just get it to load up. Every community from Northfield to Newtown, Small Heath to Sutton Coalfield has the chance to celebrate the Commonwealth Games through Birmingham City Council's new funding initiative. Applications are welcome to fund projects from £100 right up to £10,000. All proposals must add value and align to one of these three Commonwealth themes. Encouraging communities to get out and get active by participating in sports and recreational activities. Delivering community projects to help a local area get games ready. Is there a communal space you want to improve? Or perhaps you'd like to host a community celebration? We are open to ideas. Developing community-led cultural events and initiatives that encourage intergenerational activities, celebrating identity and heritage. So, if you have a project and you want to apply it, follow these simple steps. First, develop your funding proposal in line with the funding criteria. Then complete the application form by the advice deadline. Every application will be reviewed by the council. We will be in touch if we need any more information or if we think your application could be strengthened. Successful applicants will be asked to produce a written or video summary of their proposal so we can better understand how people will benefit from taking part. And of course, all proposals must comply with the appropriate COVID-19 regulations and guidelines at the time of the project or event. To find out more about this exciting opportunity, please visit the website. So, Celebrating Communities Fund. I'm just going to give you a brief um, summary for Oscar Ward. So Oscott Ward has been granted £28,600. Now, there has been a funding round because the fund was launched um, earlier um, this year in May. So in funding round one, Oscott Ward has received two applications. So, so therefore, there is still funding available um, for funding round two. Funding round two will open from the 1st of October right the way to the 30th of November this year. So as described in the video, the themes are really, really broad and they match criteria for schools, residents, community groups, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I would really encourage you to take the opportunity to apply for Celebrating Communities Fund. Um, 
we're trying to ensure that the activities they are delivered during the run up to the Commonwealth Games. So that will be next August. But there are projects that, if you like, they are quite long in their delivery. So um, the team that I work within, which is the Neighbourhood Development and Support Unit, which is in the um, City Operations Directorate of Birmingham City Council, a bit of a nightmare, um, a bit of a mouthful, I should say. Um, they, we are, if you like, appraising the applications across the city. And in funding round one, just so you have an idea of the amount of applications that have been received across the 69 wards of Birmingham, we've had over 140 um, applications and, and they vary in, in, in type and scale. So as I say, OSCOT has, still has some more funding. It's a great opportunity um, for you to apply. So I would encourage you, um, you know, to apply for Celebrating Communities Fund. I'm quite happy to provide you with the links to the um, funding and also for support that's available. Um, and also you can access that um, information through Birmingham City Council's website under um, Commonwealth Games Celebrating Communities Fund. But I will put some links in, in the chat as well. So unless there are any specific questions, Councillor Dring, um, I will finish there. And I think Laura Easton is on the call as well, um, who wants to talk a little bit about volunteering. So happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Is there any questions? No. OK, thank you. You'll just be flooded with application. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Laura, welcome to Oscar Forum meeting. You'd like to address us? Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for having me here today. My name is Laura Easton. I work for the organising committee at the Commonwealth Games um, and I am leading on the volunteer programme. So I wanted to come and give you an overview of the volunteer programme and um, give you some more information about how you can apply. But also if you would like me or one of my team to come to any of your events or present to any groups um, or networks or community groups that you have, um, then we would also be very welcome, um, very grateful to do that as well. For the Commonwealth Games, we are looking to recruit over 13,000 volunteers to be part of the Commonwealth Collective. Um, our Commonwealth Games volunteers um, will be on shift between the 28th of July and the 8th of August and applications to apply are open now. They are online um, through our website, which I'll post in the chat just after this. Um, it takes around 15 minutes to complete and they'll be open for the next three to four weeks. So once they're closed, people won't be able to um, apply again. So it's just um, to let everyone know that now is the time to get their name in the hat if they would like to be considered for one of the, the roles. There is something for everyone in that we have volunteer positions within the sport venues, within the athlete villages, as part of the cultural festivals, as part of welcoming people to the city and um, so one of our main priorities is to have local people involved so we really want to have people from Birmingham as part of our program and um, to to welcome the world to the to Birmingham and the West Midlands um, uh, like I say applications open now volunteers will then be invited to an interview and we'll go we'll deliver full training to them so people don't have to have volunteered before they don't have to have particular experience in any area um, what we want is people who are passionate um, and who are are dedicated to be part of the team so yeah just to to let you know the opportunity is open i'll post the link in the chat and if there is anything that I can send out to support people with promoting the opportunities, then I would be more than happy to. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions? No? No questions, Laura. So can, can you uh, send us the information, you know? Yes. And the link to be able to uh, ask people yes. if they want to come forward and volunteer. All right. Yes. Brilliant. Thank okay. you very much. Right. Thank oh, you. I think I, I think our hands just gone up. Yeah, there. sorry, Councillor Dring. I, I couldn't find my, my hand quick uh, quick, quick enough. Okay. Can I just ask a question about um age um 
for that's volunteers. That's a good question. Please. Yes, that's very good, good question. question. Um, it's 18 years of age um, from the 1st of January 2022. There will be a young volunteer programme which will launch later in the year. So there'll be more information that will come out about that um, in the autumn. But for the main volunteer programme, it is 18 years of age um, and there's no upper age limit. Thank you. Thanks. OK. Thanks, everyone. No more questions? No? Right. That would be good to get the kids involved in volunteering, Mr Williams. Especially the sixth form. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. It would be our year 13s, our sixth formers will have uh, 100 uh, yeah. in school. So we, I'm really keen to sort of launch it to them. It'd be brilliant. Yeah, good. Good. Right. Thank you, Laura. And thank you, Neil, for your report. So, Khalid? Yeah, you thank next. you, Chair. I, I really, I'm literally going to shoot off in a second because I'm waiting for a a call from uh, Parliament we need to address. So if I disappear quickly, that's that's why. Uh, look, I think you're doing a fantastic job here. You've got all, all the groups that are necessary uh, to make sure we're doing the right and, and the correct job. Uh, I think the Queswick Nature Reserve is a fantastic resource, as I've said before. Uh, I think Mr Williams is doing a fantastic job uh, in, uh, in our school, which is the largest school probably in Europe, I think. Uh, as it was, uh, probably the figures have gone down slightly to what it was, uh, but still fairly uh, one of the one of the largest schools that we have. And to do that sort of work around that is is, is absolutely superb. Uh, I think the police are doing a good job uh, noticing some of the figures are going down. Uh, they have a news resource in terms of students coming in there, so we need to support that and make sure we use that wisely. Uh, and perhaps Councillor we can have a chat with the police later on. Uh, in relation to that. Uh, and I think it's important uh, that we sort of try and keep on top of this, particularly during the summer. Uh, and so, uh, you know, young people tend to be out, it's hotter. Uh, and also perhaps uh, some people might drink a little bit too much as well. So we need to get around to that and, and support that. Uh, one other thing I want to raise particularly is the condition of the roads. Uh, I think we need to look at that very, very seriously. Uh, I'll be raising that with the cabinet member. We've already raised this issue in, the, in our MPs meeting uh, with the cabinet member concerned. I think we do need to have a proper approach uh, in the way that we maintain our road services. Uh, just in terms of you going up and down the King Standing Road is terrible. A number of other roads as well. Uh, if you're going down uh, potholes and just broken up uh, repairs are not just good enough. Uh, in, in the way that they've come across. So I think we would seriously, seriously need to look at that uh, and we'll do that. And I'm happy to work uh, with the local councillors and the team to do th work on those issues. The Commonwealth Games is coming uh, and we've got that uh, coronavirus permitting. Let's hope we, we don't get back into any, in any particular surge again. And we sort of manage our way through the lifting of the lockdown in a more sensible uh, and a permanent way. That will, will be an issue that we'll need to coordinate for the residents uh, of Oscar to make sure that there's least possible disturbance, disturbance that there is. So I'm very happy to uh, set up meetings with the Commonwealth Games people and the City Council uh, in terms of how we manage that and how that works. And of course, I understand and I've all made a huge uh, uh, sort of noise about what's going on at the moment with the uh, uh, one stop uh, and dropping of the flyover. That's causing problems. I know myself because whenever I try to get to Oscar, uh, it takes an additional hour to get there. So I'm aware of that uh, and it's not very easy. Uh, continuous dialogue with the council on that uh, will continue uh, as I've done for the last two and a half years on that. So I think I'm happy to support that and move forward on that. So those are the key things really. And I've really literally got to go. So any questions I'll take very quickly and then we, I can shoot off. Thank you. Any questions? Everybody's been so good today. Oh, that's very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we've had a very comprehensive uh, conversation and I think most things that's have been right. covered, you know, so that's the reason. Are yeah. you all right, Darius? Have you enjoyed your first meeting? Uh, yes, it's been very informative. No, it's been brilliant. I appreciate I appreciate all the uh, all the talks given today. Really great amount of information. It's great to see what's happening in the ward as well. So uh, the ward is moving forward, we're trying to get these issues sorted as well as... We don't as sit those. on our laurels in Oscott, we do work in Oscott. We uh, work also, in Council, I, I'd like to welcome Darius to the to the, the yeah. meeting as well, so the first meeting I've had with him as well, so I think it's good. 
to see you and let's carry on working for the benefit of the area uh, that we all represent. Definitely look forward to working with you all. And today is a very productive conversation. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Williams, for all the yeah. hard work you put in and you have done over the years. Right. Yeah, uh, no, thanks for the invite. And we, we'll continue to attend this meeting if it's OK. Uh, oh, yeah, really important, you know, oh, yeah. so many positive things going on at the moment. Yeah. So right, with that, I'll uh, close the meeting and the next date of the next meeting will be notified. OK, so thank you for coming and thanks to everybody. And thanks to Kay. I'll talk to you after. OK. okay. Thanks, Councillor Dring. I'll just Thanks very much indeed, yeah. everybody. Thanks, Mr. Williams. Thanks, Councillor Sandu. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Bye, you. Brenda. See you soon. All the Mr. best. Williams. Thank you, Bye. Bye.